Ladies and gentlemen, thanks to B-Link from China, they sent me their newest box. Now this one is based on the Amlogic S905X3. As far as I know, this is the first device that's uh, utilizing that Amlogic system on a chip. So we're going to open it up and see what it looks like. Again, it comes packaged very well. Again, this is a gift. Again, it's a sample from B-Link from China. So, uh, we're very well packaged. So, I'll open it up and we'll see you open the box. Okay, it's a very simple box covered in cellophane. So, I'll go ahead and open the cellophane up and we'll take another look at it. Okay, so here it is with the cellophane removed. B-Link. What's in the box? The B-Link box, the remote control, and HDMI cable, and power adapter. So that's what's in the box. Easy to set up. Now this one here, it does not show what this particular box has. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a mark there. So this might be the 4 gig uh, RAM and 64 gig of storage, but we'll find out. So here's all the stuff that it includes. One USB 3 port, one USB 2 port, one HDMI, one RJ45, and that is gigabit. So that's not just fast Ethernet, but gigabit. So that's what's in there. The power adapter is 5 volt and 2 amp, so that's uh, 10 watts. Very low power, so I'll go ahead and open it up. Okay, I took it out of the box. This thing is tiny. I have never seen anything this tiny for a box. B-Link. There's a micro SD card slot, a USB 2, or excuse me, a USB 2 and a USB 3 port. Here's the AV port, Ethernet, Gigabit Ethernet, and there's the HDMI, which is 2.02. .02. And there is the power port, nothing here. And here's the underside, you've got some ventilation ports there. And so I guess that's what you got right there, so. That is tiny. So let me show you. This was something that I got many years ago. This was tiny. That plugged into your uh, HDMI port directly on the TV. And then here was another one. This was another stick. Used this one for a long time. Again, tiny. Very tiny. All right, so I'll go ahead and finish opening up the rest of the box. Here's a manual, a user manual. different languages. This is an HDMI cord. And the power supply. Uh-oh. That's a European power supply. So this will not work on my box. So I'll have to get an adapter. So we won't be able to test this box out until I get a power adapter. And here's a remote. I've got two already that looks very similar to this. And as a matter of fact, one's identical. And very nice remote. Very nice remote. And it is an air mouse. And you got this item here. Satisfied. So that's what you got. So I can't crank it up because I don't have a power supply to uh, a way to plug it in so I have to get an adapter so thank you
Okay, fortunately I found a uh, power supply, because I've got two or three dozen of these boxes. So the first one I grabbed, it physically matches. They're both uh, 5 volt and 2 amp. And uh, both of them have center, the little center pin is positive. So I checked both of those. So that should work. So I'll go ahead and plug it in and we'll kick it over and see how it runs. So that's it. But again, thanks to B-Link, I get to test it. Now one thing they did tell me, this firmware is still not 100% complete. They're still working on it. So uh, we'll see what it can do. Thank you. This is to give you an idea of how tiny this little thing is. I got it sitting on top of the B-Link GT King and it is small. So that's what I want to show you. Okay, here we are at the first setup. Okay, this is what it looks like. This is the main screen. Now the remote is a wireless mouse, so let's see what that does. So let's see. Uh, first, let's check the settings. Okay, I've got it connected with Ethernet. There's no account set up. Uh, device preferences, about. Android security patch level, August 5th, 2018. That's a year old. Kernel version is Tuesday, July the 9th, 2019. Build is 101PO. Okay. Let's see what that does. Okay. Now we're developer. Now version 9. Let's go back to version 9 and see what that does. Okay. That brings up the Pi. So it is Pi. Android Pi. Sound. System styles is turned on. Storage. Okay, 56 gigabyte. So that is a lot. Developers options. We just turned that on. We just enabled that. That's enabled. And USB debug debugging is enabled. All right, that's it on that. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look and see what, uh, well, one thing I need to do here, go back to uh, device set, Android settings, display. I need to turn this off because my TV does not support that. Because the colors are washed out if I don't turn that on. For whatever reason, uh, it doesn't automatically show my Samsung 4K TV is not capable. So now that it looks much better. All right, let's see what uh, uh, we've got here. Android keyboard, installer, the app market. Now that does not work. It does not work for whatever reason. Now, this firmware, when they send me the box, this is one of the first box that's using this new Amlogic X. S905X3 uh, system on a chip. So this is the first box that they came out. Uh, this is a very nice explorer here. I'll get more into that. Okay, these are what comes on this device. So, all right, we'll start uh, setting things up. Okay, let's do some testing. And a diagnostic, let's see what we got here, ADA64. This is going to give you some information on the box itself. The manufacturer is AZW, which is B-Link from China. Now, this is using, uh, this is the model GT1 Mini-2, Amlogic and Franklin board. Now, this is using the newest Amlogic system on a chip, SOC, the S905X3. As far as I know, B-Link is the first box, uh, that is using this system on a chip. But anyway, this particular one's got four gigabyte of RAM, installed RAM, and 64 gigabyte of storage. 
uh, CPU. It's running 32-bit mode. And it's up to 1908 megahertz. Clock 2 and clock 3 are sleep. Excuse me, clock 3 and 4 are sleeping. A display. It's running in 1920 by 1080. And it's uh, Molly G31. Network. I've got the Wi-Fi turned off, but I'll do some testing later. Android. And it's running the Pi. Devices. Uh -oh, commercial. They have commercials on these apps. But anyway, uh, that's what I wanted to show you there. Okay, now let's take a look and see what CPU says about this board. Okay, four cores, architecture, 1.91 gigahertz, revision, RP, R1PO, clock speed. Okay, so that's what it says about that. The SOC, and here again, it's the same information that we got from the other one. System. Battery thermal. 49, which is not bad. So anyway, that is from CPU Z information. Now we're going to test the DRM info. Okay, Widevine CDM is security level L1 and HDCP level supported 2.2. So uh, it's got high security. Clear key. Version 1.1 and logic SDK level. Okay, I guess that's what that shows there. Okay, now we're going to go into this good stuff. We're going to run the N22 benchmark. It's asking for all kinds of authority to do this and do that, but I will uninstall it as soon as it gets done running the benchmark. So we'll go ahead and install it and test it. And it's going to take a little while, so I'll just go ahead and wait till it gets done. We are using N22 benchmark version 7.2.3. So I just want to show you what version it's using. Okay, as you can see, it ended up with a score of 47,995. Now, it's probably not been optimized because uh, B-Link, when they sent me the box, they said they were still working on the firmware that's still uh, pretty much beta. So they're still working on the firmware. So that's probably why the score is so low. We have one more test to run. This is the internet speed test. So right now we're going to test it on my Ethernet, and then we'll, we'll test it on Wi-Fi, the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz. So right now we're running on my gigabit Ethernet. And right now it's running max of what my internet speed is, the download speed. So that was about the max that will run right there. Okay, there it is. It shows 160 megabits per second download. It did not run an upload test, but I have very low upload speed. So there it is for Ethernet. 160 megabits per second, which is pretty doggone good. Now I will test the two point. Uh, first I'll text text. Test the 5 gigahertz, then the 2.4. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, right here we're connected to the 5G network. Signal strength is excellent. Frequency 5 gigahertz and security. Okay, so that's it. So now we're going to run our speed test. Okay, with the 5 gigahertz, it's 73 megabits per second. Okay, I re-ran it. Again, this is the 5 gigahertz of Wi-Fi, and it ran 81 megabits per second. So that's not too bad. So now we're going to try the 2.4. Here's the information on the uh, 2 gigahertz. 
Signal strength axilla, frequency 2.4 gigahertz and security WPA2. Now the modem is on the same level as the box here and it's about, uh, I would say about 10 meters away. So that's it. So we're going to go ahead and test it now. Okay, first run is a dismal 17 megabits per second. Again, this is 2.4 gigahertz. And we're not that far away from the router, and it's a straight line of sight, nothing in between. So let me go ahead and rerun it. Okay, I ran it again, and this time we got a little bit better. We got a 21 megabits per second. Uh, that's not great. So it is suffering on the 2.4 gigahertz band. I forgot to run the most important task of all, uh, root checker and the terminal emulator. The terminal emulator is going to determine whether it's got a locked bootloader. So let's check the DRM info again. Security level L1. This is the Widevine CDM. H, maximum HDCP is 2.2. So that is all the ingredients that it needs to run Netflix in 4K. So if uh, B-Leak and uh, Netflix ever got together and agreed to uh, let Netflix run this box, it's got all the security requirements for that. However, there's something very interesting here because according to the other thing, it said it's rooted. So let's find out. Okay, sure enough, it is rooted. So I don't know how they can have DRM level one and still be rooted, but anyway, it is rooted. Okay, so now we're going to check this, if it's got a locked bootloader. And we're going to do that by using this app right here, the terminal emulator. So what we're going to do, we're going to type reboot recovery. Now, if this boots into the recovery menu, that means that it does not have a locked bootloader. So if it does not have a locked bootloader, that means that we can install other operating systems. We can install uh, Linux, we can install Libre, we can install Core ELEC. So we can install a lot of different stuff and dual boot it if it's got a boot, uh, locked bootloader. So if we had it on an external hard drive, we would have the OS on that. We would either have it on micro SD card or a pen drive. So yes, this is all set up to dual boot. So that's what I want to show you. So we'll go ahead and reboot now. Slick, it's very slick. Okay, I installed Plex and let's see what it does. Let's try this one here. Let's see if it plays. Nope, it did not play. Error. So, this one does not work. Plex will not work. Now we're going to test MB. Now, all three of these are players that plays your local media, not streamers, but local media. So, this is what we're trying now. Very difficult to use with this remote. Well, let's try that one. Okay, it's doing something. See what it stands for nerd says. It's a direct play. Let's 
It's not playing very well. It says it's direct playing, but it's not playing very well at all. So we're going to say this is a failure. Now, one more thing we're going to test right here. Now, this is the HD Home Run app. This uses my HD Home Run over-the-air tuners, network tuners. So let's see how that works. Okay, it's playing with Dolby Digital. And it's playing correctly. So the HD Home Run app works very well. Recorded shows, the Cowboys, Mr. Ed, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, and it works very well with the remote, Turn it, take it off the uh, air, air mouse part of it. So that works very well. Test. Okay, so that we will say that the HD Home Run application runs very well on this device. The, uh, it plays in uh, Adobe Digital, so everything is working good on that one. Okay, now if you notice down here, if you swipe up, it brings up the toolbar down here. Click on that, you clear all. So now you cleared everything that was there, then you go over here and refresh your cache. Now if you want to... No matter that, you click that again. Now, also at the top up here, you've got that up here, but you cannot access it. All right, now the next step we're going to do is Cody. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to install that and play it. Okay, I got Cody all set up and added some uh, media to it. So let's do some tests. Okay, movies, titles. Now we can go to white list, wall, fan art. Let's try that. Now if you notice in the bottom right hand corner, it tells you what it is. It's a 1080 HD, so that is an HD movie. Now this plays everything perfectly except for those movies or videos that are encoded in VC1. It does not like VC1. But this one plays perfectly. And it's got Dolby Digital or DTS. So that will play very well. I can't play it very long, but no drop frames. Before I skip, but that was because I was tinkering with it. That's VC1 hardware encoding. Now it will be a little bit jerky. Skip five. It's not bad, but it's not perfect. But all these analog boxes have trouble with They struggle with that. Okay, if you notice in the bottom right hand corner it says 4K. So this is a 4K video. So let's, uh, let's see how it looks. Now if you notice it's an H.265 hardware uh, decoded. And it will play perfectly. No drop frames, no skip frames. So the H.265 is no problem at all for this. And this one will be playing in uh, DTS or uh, D Dolby Digital. Again, the Skyscraper from 2018. And it is H.265. Hardware decoded. No drop frames, no skip frames. And if you notice, it's 78, 38 megabits per second. So this is a very high bit rate.
but uh, there's no dropping, no pausing, or nothing. So it works perfectly. So uh, that's what I want to show you about that. Now this is Back to the Future. Again, it's a AMC VC1 hardware decoded, but uh, it's quite jerky. And if you notice, it's got skip 35 frames. It should be more than that because it does look pretty jerky on here. But well, maybe that's my vision. But anyway, that's what I was going to show you there. Okay, here's a sample of the TV shows. Got the titles. Take a look at that one. We're going to go with the white list. Let's go to wall. How about info wall? White list. Again, this plays perfectly. Now, let's look at the TV. Now, this one, I'm using TV head in server and TV head in client. The server is running on a different Android box. Uh, now, the guide, I get 24, 20, excuse me, 14 days of guide data. And if you notice down at the bottom, it gives you a lot of information about it. Uh, the cast, it was released in 1939, Mickey Rooney, uh, Supermarket Sweep, Cimarron Strip, Gilligan's Island. Now this is Season 2, Episode 3, The Little Dictator. So it gives you all kinds of information. Again, I've got 14 days of guide data. So that's uh, Me TV 4.3. Now these are over-the-air uh, channels. They're free, come in on my antenna. I think I got about 35, 36 different channels that I actually watch. So that's all of them. So this is what that looks like. But if I want to go to here, Colombo, if I want to record it, I can record it. I could add timers. So I could uh, make it a guide based timer. I could choose anything I want, whatever I want. So, and I could have it. Uh, Record the whole series, so that's what it can do. So this is pretty slick for that, but again, it plays perfectly. And there's the channels, main TV. There's the antenna TV. Let's see who that is. Coach. Thanks a month. That's less than thirty-five cents a day. Your rate is locked in and can never go. Perfect. Okay, that's what I want to show you. So as a media player, it plays fantastic. Now we'll test streaming ability. There is no Netflix app for this box, probably because it's got that wide vine level one. So if I dug around and probably side loaded one, I would probably get one. But at this time, it is not on the Play Store. So Netflix, we cannot trust. So, what we have now is YouTube. So let's test that. Again, I'll just minimize that. Let's see what it does. Okay, now this, it opens up like a, um, you have in a, uh, Windows Explorer screen, so it's not a, opening up in an app like a normal Android uh, YouTube app opens up, so this is completely different. So let's pick one here. I'm Tom Steyer. In 2010, I signed a giving pledge to fund good causes. Let's make change happen. The quality is pretty good. I don't know if it's in HD quality. I have no idea. There's no way to, to find out that I'm aware of. So it looks pretty good. Uh, so I would say that that's a go for that. So YouTube works. So for right now, I would say this is not a very good streaming device. Uh, 
it does play YouTube, but there's no Netflix. I don't have Amazon Prime uh, membership to test it, so I don't even bother installing it. So MB is a bust there, so I'm going to go ahead and uninstall that. Plex is obviously a bust because they won't even play. Uninstall that. So that leaves me with the HD Home Run, which plays very well. That plays your TV. That turns this TV into a TV. So that plays well. Uh, YouTube plays well. And where is Cody? Cody plays extremely well. So those three apps are very, works very well. Then you've got Chrome. Now I can go ahead and add a bunch more uh, apps, and I'll show you how those work. And also the uh, the uh, speaker works on it too. Let me test my uh, microphone. Well, what time is it? The time is 4.41 p.m. Okay, so that works. So the remote works, the microphone works on it. So let me download some more apps and see what we got. Okay, I added some more. Gmail, that works very well. Calendar works very well. You don't need to look at my calendar, but that works very well. Maps, again, that works good. Okay, here's a location of where I lived many, many, many years ago, right down in the heart of Texas, and that's what it looks like. Here's the street view. Hasn't changed much in the last 50 years or 60 years. That's what the neighborhood, neighborhood looks like. Again, this is Street View. Okay, that's that one. Now, if I want to check my cameras, my security cameras mounted on my house, I just open up this app. And there's my security cameras, some of them. <coughs> so that's that one. Okay, here's another app. Showing another one of my cameras. This one's facing straight down the driveway. So that's that camera. That's pretty much, pretty much what I want to show you. So basically, let's go up here to Cody. Plays very well. HD Home Run. That's my TV application that turns the TV into a TV to watch TV shows. So that works very well. YouTube works well, but it's not the Android version. It's a, it's a desktop version. Then the Gmail, that works good. Chrome, the web browser, obviously works very well. The calendar works very well. The uh, camera, security camera, maps, they all work very well. And the, uh, the uh, voice works good, too. What time is it? The time is 5.21 p.m. Open YouTube. Open YouTube. Okay, there we go. It works. And it is quite fast. So these boxes are getting better and better every generation. So again, this is the Amlogic S905X3 uh, system on a chip. And B-Link is the one that's using it. And they're the first box to hit the market that's using that SOC system on a chip. 
they have more firmware uh, modifications to make, so there's still a few bugs in here. So they're working at it. They told me when they sent me the box that they would uh, have a firmware update out soon. So I'll be waiting for that. So thank you much.